I'm gonna show you how to find your XDS receiver serial number and how to set up and change your programming schedule so that way it plays out what you want, when you want. I'm Marcus O'Rourke, I'm a 20 plus year broadcast engineer and currently the engineering manager for a content distribution company that deals with satellite streaming and broadcast. The first place you can find it is on the receiver's front panel. Push the set button, press the right arrow, and then press the set button again. The receiver's serial number will be displayed right there for you to uh, use. The second place that you can find the receiver's serial number is on the back of the receiver on a label on the back. Once you have your receiver's serial number, you're gonna to wanna to open up the affiliate webpage. Now you can get this webpage from your network's affiliate relations department or from your content distribution provider for this network. In this case, I have it already up. You'll see that it looks for the receiver serial number and the password. Well, we just have the receiver's serial number and I'm gonna type in mine and then the password and we'll hit enter. When you log in, you may be presented with a message. For example, this one right here is asking me to set a maintenance window. A maintenance window is important. It allows software updates to be done. It allows maintenance-y type of things to be done. You wanna set this for a time when you're not recording or playing back from your receiver. Sometimes it could be the middle of the night, it could be a weekend, but you may wanna set that. I'm gonna ignore that for right now and just close that. You'll be brought into this configuration page, this friendly password up here you don't have to change it, but this allows you to change your web, uh, the password to get into this web page. The next part is the time zone. This is the time zone of that receiver. So if it's in mountain time, select mountain time. If it's in Pacific time, select Pacific time. Eastern time, central time, select where that receiver will be. Leave this steer my audio ports to match my program schedule unchecked it would it'll do strange things for you and you want to leave that alone and then again this is where you can update your maintenance window for that software update there is a lot of other things that you can do in here with your radio but and i'm going to use radio and receiver interchangeably so uh so what you're going to want to do though now is go up to programming and scheduling when it comes up, you'll see that it ha is asking for a station selection. You may just have one station. You may have many stations. Select the station that you are wanting to make changes to or to see the, the schedule for and click OK. It will load. You'll see the whole schedule there. Lots of stuff, lots of colors. In this case, each program has a different color and it just kind of helps break it up. So we see we have our green program there. We have our yellow program, our gray program, our blue program. Let's go in and edit this green program. That's at the one o'clock hour here. So I'm gonna click on that box. And now I can see all of these different feeds for the entire day. Once I'm in here, we can see that we see that they're airing live as they come across the network and at what time. We can change this. If we don't want to air it at the time it comes down the network, we can record it and play it back later. To do that, if you already have it set up like this, we're going to modify it. So just go to edit. And you'll see in this section here, you can... What do you want to do with this program? We can broadcast it live at the time of the network feed. Or in this case that we're doing this example for, we want to broadcast the program delayed by automatically capturing the program and then broadcasting it at a local airtime of my choice. So if we select the radio button next to that, we can ask, we can say what time we want to air this at. For example, I'll say, Instead of 12 o'clock a.m., we'll say it's at 12, 10 a.m. on the feed date. So that is the same day that you're receiving it. 
if for some reason you want to delay it by a day, two days, up to seven days, you would change and select one of these other ones. Use the complete feed. You generally would want to do that. That would be the entirety of that program. What days of the week you want it to make changes to when you want to start this change. And if for some reason you want to end this program at a certain time. Otherwise, just leave it on open-ended. Now let's click on modify. And you'll see here now that it says, instead of saying live broadcast, it says time delayed broadcast, local airtime at 12.10 a.m. Now the network feed is still at midnight to 12.05, but you're going to play it back at 12.10 to 12.15. If for some reason you don't want to take this feed at all, you can click delete and be done with it. I am gonna go put this back to live because this radio is one that I use to monitor. If you have another program you want to select, select new program button right up here at the top. Choose what program you want. You could have more than this. You could have fewer than this. But whatever it is, we're going to do the test channel just for fun. And then we're going to click OK. Now we can see that this is something that loops for the entire hour because the network feed time is 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. 1 a.m. to 2 a.m., 2 a.m. to 3 a.m., 3 a.m., et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We can create a new station schedule using this feed. We can broadcast that program live. We can record it. We can record it and play it back later. We have all those same options that we saw on the previous screen. I don't want to be bringing up my test channel, so we'll leave it at that. So that is basically what you uh, need to do. And we'll come back over here to this calendar view. The really important thing that you want to make sure is, let me get into one of these, these programs here, is when you make a change, nope, it's not on there. It's down here. When you make a change, you click this commit schedule to receiver. If you don't click that, that button, it will not save to your radio. So make sure you click that after you've made your changes. And it'll take it about a few minutes for it to send it through the uh, network management system to your radio. It's not instantaneous. It's going to take a few minutes. While we're in here, let's look at some of the other things just for fun. Relay mappings. You can see what relays are mapped to what physical relay on the back of your radio. So a program may have associated net cues. In this case, you see 100 and 104. Those net cues are going to be for a very specific program. And when your receiver receives those net cues, it's just data coming over the satellite, it will close a physical relay on the back of the radio. You can edit it if you want to, but generally these things are set by the network or by the content distribution. Another one here is health. This is kind of important. I'm going to skip port schedules here, but health is really important. This will, you're looking at the content distribution, the network management systems website here. If your radio isn't talking back to the radio or if there is a problem with the radio, it will display here current health. It might say something like alarm or fault or, or your status could be wrong, but it'll also tell you what your EBNO is for your receiver and when the last time it reported back to the network management system. This allows the content distribution uh, partner to assist you in troubleshooting your radio. If for some reason you're not getting programs or your programs are coming with errors, you're getting choppiness or whatever it is, making sure that your radio is connected to the internet so that way it can talk back to the network management system for the content distribution partner is key. And that is a huge troubleshooting help for them. That's generally about everything you'd really want to see in here. If you have any files that are 
on your radio commercials that will be played out uh, locally. You can see those listed on here. So that is about it for updating your schedules and looking at the health of your receiver as far as the network management side goes. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I'll try to get to them as best as I can. Sometimes though, the questions really need to go to your network affiliate relations or to the manufacturer, but I'll do the best I can to answer them for you. So while you're here though, watch some of the other videos. I have some transmitter site tours, some explanation about broadcast, but you might really enjoy the transmitter tours. Those are pretty cool. Anyways, thank you for watching. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep learning.